the cosmological constant, and Einstein's greatest blunder. The strength of the force that drives the expansion of the universe is determined by a number called the cosmological constant, lambda. Lambda is approximately 2.888 times 10 to the power of minus 122. Lambda, is incredibly small. It has 120 zeros after the decimal point, and then a 2. Lambda is referred to by many names, such as quintessence, dark energy, vacuum energy, zero-point energy, anti-gravity, and the fifth force. Regardless of what we call it, all names refer to the same phenomenon, that the universe's expansion is not slowing but accelerating. In 1917, in an effort to explain how the universe could be static and eternal, the prevailing belief at the time, without gravitationally collapsing, Einstein introduced lambda as a parameter to his equations of general relativity. Quote, the system of equations allows a readily suggested extension which is compatible with the relativity postulate, and is perfectly analogous to the extension of Poisson's equation. For on the left-hand side of, the equation, we may add the fundamental tensor G sub UV multiplied by a universal constant, negative lambda, at present unknown, without destroying the general covariance, this field equation, with lambda sufficiently small, is in any case also compatible with the facts of experience derived from the solar system. End quote. Albert Einstein in Cosmological Considerations in the General Theory of Relativity, 1917. But observations by Vesto Slipher and later by Edwin Hubble and Milton Humerson suggested the universe was not static, but dynamic. In 1922, Alexander Friedman showed that the equations of general relativity could account for and describe an expanding universe. In a final blow, Arthur Eddington, who ironically proved Einstein right in 1919 by performing the first test of general relativity, proved Einstein's static cosmological model wrong in 1930, Eddington showed that a static universe is unstable and therefore could not be eternal. Einstein was quick to change his mind. He said, new observations by Hubble and Humerson concerning the redshift of light in distant nebulae make the presumptions near that the general structure of the universe is not static. He added, the redshift of the distant nebulae have smashed my old construction like a hammer blow. According to George Gamo, Einstein said, the introduction of the cosmological term was the biggest blunder he ever made in his life. Einstein likely considered it a blunder not for being wrong, but because he missed an opportunity. Had Einstein not tried to prove a static universe and instead looked at what his own equations implied, he might have predicted a dynamic universe before observational results came in. Einstein could have scooped Hubble. The idea of a cosmological constant was abandoned. But in 1980, it made a return with the theory of cosmic inflation. Cosmic inflation filled gaps in the Big Bang. It explained where all the matter and energy came from, why the universe is expanding, and why the density of the universe rests on a knife edge. See, what caused the Big Bang. All inflation needed to get started was for the energy of the vacuum to be non-zero. If vacuum energy is non-zero, space expands on its own, exactly in the way that a cosmological constant predicts. Quote, the repulsive gravity associated with the false vacuum is just what Hubble ordered. It is exactly the kind of force needed to propel the universe into a pattern of motion in which any two particles are moving apart with a velocity proportional to their separation. End quote. Alan Guth in Eternal Inflation and Its Implications, 2007. Inflation provided an answer to one fine-tuning question. It answered why is the density of the universe so close to the critical density. But in doing so, inflation reintroduced lambda. And the value of lambda highlighted a fine-tuning coincidence so extreme that it's considered one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in physics. John Wheeler and Richard Feynman estimated that there ought to be enough vacuum energy in the space of a light bulb to boil the Earth's oceans. 
According to quantum field theory we expect the inherent energy of the vacuum to be 10 to the power of 113 joules per cubic meter. A type 2 supernova, by comparison, is just 10 to the power of 46 joules. But when cosmologists measured the vacuum's energy, they found it to be pitifully weak, one billionth of a joule per cubic meter. In this case, theory and experiment disagreed by a factor of 10 to the power of 122. This error is described as, the worst theoretical prediction in the history of physics. The question of why this prediction was so bad is called the cosmological constant problem, or the vacuum catastrophe. It remains one of the great unsolved mysteries of physics. But there is at least one reason why vacuum energy is so low. You probably guessed, had it not been as small as it is, life could not exist. In 1987, before lambda was measured, Steven Weinberg predicted that lambda must be non-zero, positive, and smaller than 10 to the power of minus 120, Weinberg reasoned that had lambda been negative, the universe would have gravitationally collapsed billions of years ago. Had instead lambda been slightly larger than it is, say around 10 to the power of minus 119, then the universe would expand too quickly for galaxies, stars, or planets to form. In 1998, two teams of astronomers studying distant supernovae confirmed Weinberg's prediction. They found that the expansion rate of the universe was not slowing down, but accelerating. The observed rate of accelerated expansion places lambda 2.888 times 10 to the power of minus 122. This was exactly in the range Steven Weinberg had predicted, 11 years earlier. For their discovery, Saul Perlmutter, Adam Rees and Brian Schuett received the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics. Eighty years after introducing it, Einstein's cosmological constant was vindicated. The only difference is lambda is not at a value that keeps a static universe, but instead is slightly larger, and so it drives an expansion. Vacuum energy appears in the Casimir effect and van der Waals forces. These forces allow geckos to climb walls and colloidal solutions like mayonnaise to hold together despite being a mix of oil and water. The same energy that holds mayo together pushes the galaxies apart. But the probability of lambda having the value it does is so low that it was inconceivable to physicists. There appears to be no reason it should be so small, aside from the fact that a minuscule lambda is necessary for there to be any complex structures or life in this universe. Quote. The fine tunings, how fine tuned are they? Most of them are 1% sort of things. In other words, if things are 1% different, everything gets bad. And the physicist could say maybe those are just luck. On the other hand, this cosmological constant is tuned to one part in 10 to the power of 120, 120 decimal places. Nobody thinks that's accidental. That is not a reasonable idea, that something is tuned to 120 decimal places just by accident. That's the most extreme example of fine tuning. End quote. Leonard Susskind in What We Still Don't Know, Are We Real? 2004